met Bert. He looked very distinguished. He was an Orthodox Jew. At home, he always said the prayer before, before the meal. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Shabbos, Anorach. You have to read to know what's what's there. It's more details. More details. Tell me something from your childhood. Do you remember any special Yiddish songs that you used to like to sing, that your father sang, or you used to like to sing? No, right, right now I cannot think of it. Uh -huh. no, right now it's very sad going back to the family. I cannot think. But uh, yeah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, oh Hanukkah, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful song, but I don't remember now. I cannot tell. You don't remember. What about the uh, Kumitz Olive Bass, Often Pripachik? Often okay, Pripachik, yeah. No, those songs we were not singing in our house. No, more, more cantorial music. More cantorial uh -huh. music, yeah. More, uh, more music from prayer <coughs> than davening. Davening, that's it. Uh -huh. That's it. He had such a beautiful voice. The woman, after the service, we used to come over and she said, she said, she you know. You, you were, the last time you saw your mother and your father, do you remember when that was? I remember very clearly. I remember. I promised them that I would come and see them again. And they told me, be careful, because no Jews is allowed to go on the train. I put a hanky over my face, you know, on my head, you yeah. know, look mm -hmm. like a Polish girl traveling. If they would catch me, they would kill me. They killed me. That's how my mother, when she arrived in Kolobots, she was afraid that they recognized her, so she fell down and she hurt her knee, foot. And she was laying there behind the straw, not able to take care of the children with her husband. So they were in a big, big warehouse with straw families who ran away, you know, came there to hope, hoping to survive there. People would try to help themselves as much as they could, but there was no place where to hide. There was no place where to hide. They find you all over. Let, let, let me take you back to the liberation, but before the liberation, we were talking about the death march and the snow, and the snow was wet, and you had nothing except your dress, the wooden shoes. shoes. Where did you go? Where did the death march take you? We, we were marching for about two, three days. Two days or three days, I cannot tell you exactly, because uh, we didn't know the date, we didn't know the time, we were just going, you know, day, night, and night and light, night and light, and then they put us they took uh, the women, a few women who still, they saw, we had a selection again, you know what I mean? And uh, they took us to Robinsburg, they put us, who still can, could walk or work, they put us on the train and took us to Robinsburg, which was uh, just a woman's camp. And they kept us there, uh, we, were, we didn't go to the barracks because there was no room. We were in a tent where there was snow just, and it was January. The, the wind and the snow was blowing in, you know. And we were laying on the straw. We didn't got nothing warm, a piece of bread, but no, nothing warm, no soup, nothing. After a few days, they made, and then uh, when from, from the march, when they put us, took us on the, an open train, open train, it was not like a full coast, you know, an open train, and that's three quarters was snow in there, you know, and my foot got frozen, I couldn't walk. So I took my shoes off, and then I could put them, they wouldn't shoes, and then I could put them on because my foot was all swollen. So we helped each other. Some found a blanket, some had a needle, a thread, and we made a from, from material, a pair of shoes, boots, something, and that's what I was wearing. 
and then they had a selection to send the people who still can look, you know, a little bit healthy. Nobody looked healthy, and they took us to another for another camp to work. After Ravensbrück was another camp, so I couldn't walk, but. Um, I knew that I couldn't survive there, laying in the tent, you know, in the snow. So we all pushed ourselves. So we had to walk, like, let's say, to the, to the, a few steps, about 20 steps, and the, uh, the cop, the woman, the Gestapo, you know, she selected people. You're good, you still can go to work, and you're not good, you stay there. There was selection. And here I was limping, I couldn't walk. But miracles. When I walked, just the will to live was so strong in me. I wanted so badly to survive, to tell what really happened there. And hoping maybe somebody's still alive. And uh, you know what I mean. Walked straight, like never nothing happened. I wasn't limping. When I came on the other side, I started limping again. Could you believe something like that? The woo was so strong. The, the girls in the death march who couldn't walk, who fell down, and they couldn't walk anymore in the they snow. Got, they, they shot them. They shot them. They shot them. You saw them shooting on the, the girls? Back, on the back, you know, we walked in the back of uh, the line. The work stop with dogs and the guns. Whoever fell down got the Shot. bullet right away through in the, the ditches, you know. But I cannot understand. We didn't see not one person going, passing by, civilian people. We didn't see nobody. I don't know how, you know, what kind of roads they, they pushed us farther, farther, you know. You were at one point liberated. From Ravensbrück, they took us, put us on the, uh, on the uh, buses to another Mecklenburg. Mecklenburg was an uh, uh, airfield where the, the uh, Russian or the, you know, the liberated was bombarding. And it was so much damage down there, they needed people to clean up the fields. So they took us here there. It wasn't a big camp. The houses were nicer already. The food, food was the same because they, there wasn't too, too much to eat, you know what I mean. And there, uh, we were a few months there. And then the Russian came closer. So they had to push us farther. The Russian, you know, they pushed us farther because the Russian were behind us. They did not want to, that we should be liberated by the Russian, especially with the numbers on our land. The skeleton, we were skeleton. We were walking, dead people, dead people walking. What can I do? Skeleton, skin and bones. Skin and bones. I was so skin and bones, you know, there was, the whole camp was surrounded with um, electric wires. And some people just couldn't handle, so they, went to the wire and touched the fingers and they were gone. You know, what can you do now? It was a point in my life there that I was skin and bones and I knew by the next selection I'm gonna go to the crematorium, which I was so scared of the crematorium. <laughs> so I s walked by and I saw the dead bodies laying there as so I thought to myself, okay, I know I was thought that my I was taught by my parents that God gives life and only God can take it away. You're not supposed to commit suicide. So that's why I didn't do that. Some people just commit, you know what I mean. And I said, that's it, Joyce, give up. You can just not do no more. So I walked over to the tent and I wanted to touch the finger. And I was so close to the tent and I hear my voice of my father, God gives lives and God says, don't do that. Why like he would be there. Mm -hmm. And I went back and here I am. 
so close, so close to that. Miracles, my whole life, my whole book is miracles, that's it. I didn't have no position, not, not Pishlubova or uh, work in the center commando, you know what I'm going to say. Crematorium. The, the clothes or a sewing group. I was just working outside. The last few months I was working in, in a ammunition factory. You know what I mean. So I was working inside. And from there, because uh, there was powder, so some girls got together. They, there, there was a resistance group there, now she is. So some of the boys from the Sunder Commander, every six months, they took the Sunder Commander and they took him to the guest chamber and they brought new ones because they were afraid that they would survive and tell what was going on there. So this Sunder Commander knew that their time was up. So they came, some had friends working in the ammunition, Union factory, the ammunition factory. And they asked the girls to get them some powder to make a bomb, you know what I mean? And some of the girls got the powder from the ammunition bag. I, I was making uh, nails, mm -hmm. sharpened nails. They were working on ammun by the powder. So those, there were four girls of them, I think, so four girls. And they got the part and they just got you, it out. You knew the girls? I knew, um, no, I didn't know the girls. I did not, because they worked in a different section of the factory mm. than I was. I knew the people who were with me. How did you know it was four girls? For, because they hanged them. They hanged them? They hanged them, and I was standing watching them. One day after the work, then they blew out the crematorium. And uh, right away they knew that we had some connection. So the whole factory was surrounded by Gestapo. So we thought, that's it. They're going to take all of us and put us down to the crematorium because they blew up the, crema the crematorium. But they didn't, you know what I mean. But they, they found out who did it. And they hanged up one day after work. We or they we didn't go to the barrack, but we had to the to the um, um, place where they put up the guillotines, you know. Mm -hmm. And they hanged those four girls, and the sister was standing behind me. Of one of the girls. One of the girls. And you witnessed. You witnessed. I witnessed. I witnessed. I see them hanging. One, one. I just I mentioned the name. It's, it's seven years. It's. Um, the seven, three, uh, seven years since I wrote the book. The one of the girls said, Hazak Fiamat, she belongs to Hashem, and I'd say, Hazak Fiamat, yeah, that's. Hazak, Hazak is strength. Strength, Fiamat. I'm not sure. Hazak, that was the, the uh, uh, how you say that, the uh, uh, Greeting when they greet each yeah. other, Hazak ah. very much. You know. uh -huh. Yeah, oh, Hazak. be okay. strong, be brave. Brave in Hebrew, what does it say? Brave, Ko uh, Koach. Something, Koach. Hazak, I can. Or Koach or Gibor. Yeah. So or Gibor. Be strong, be brave, be strong. And all of those girls yeah. were hanged. And I watched that. And it was so close to deliberating. It was already 1945, by the end of, by the end of 1944, close to 95, so close to the liberation, such a beautiful four years. I watched that. I watched the hanging. Yeah. I watched the hanging. And then the Russian came closer, so they, uh, they marched us farther out. And that time when we marched out, we saw the Germans, you know, were running away. They were, were afraid for the, they knew that the Russian are coming. They were afraid for the Russian. So they were running, like we were running when the German came in, you know. People were running, running. And, and then, then we stopped at a place, you know. When we went through the woods, we thought, okay, they're going to take us here, they kill us off here. We saw a big building with a chimney. That's they're going to take us there, they kill us, the girls us there, you know. To the last minute, 
Nobody, nobody hoped they're gonna survive. And then we were all in this one, that was a smaller group already, smaller camp. We all wore 